So you mentioned the ego a lot. And I know we'll hear about the ego a lot, um, especially if they're reading, you know, all the books that we read and personal development. But I'm sure there's also some folks watching or who will watch this on the replay that is still thinking about the ego as the way we learned it when we were in middle mm. school or elementary school or high school. Right. So um, tell us, what is the ego exactly? Woof. This is like, this is, oh my God. Now you just asked me for something that's going to take me four days to answer. But <laughs> this is one of my favorite conversations talking about the ego, because here's, mm. I'm going to dive into this in the shortest period that I can. The ego is not what we think it is, which is like, you know, this massive sense of like bravado and self-confidence and cockiness. That's one version of the ego. The ego can also look like a people pleaser. The ego, ego can also look like when we're victimized. It can also look like when we abandon ourselves just to stay attached to someone else. So the ego is the easiest way I can explain it is the ego is the source of most of our coping mechanisms in our life today. Now, when I say coping mechanisms, coping mechanisms can be healthy or not healthy, but let's focus on the ones that are not healthy. For example, someone who jumps in from relationship to relationship to relationship, which I was very guilty of, that's a coping mechanism, right? Mm -hmm. Someone who works too much, overworks, um, you know, just so they can create a sense of value for themselves because they're unconsciously trying to prove a point to their parents from when they were really young. That's also a coping mechanism. So coping mechanisms can look like many different things. Someone who wants to become rich for the sake of not enjoying the value of the money, but trying to prove a point to everybody else mm -hmm. around him or her, mm -hmm. that's also a coping mechanism. So the ego is this, think of it as this identity that lives between your conscious, like aware mind where you are here and your subconscious mind. But in your subconscious mind is actually all the source of your habits, your behaviors, your beliefs about yourself. That all comes from your subconscious mind. By the way, I love that little sippy straw. It's like, just took a, like very subtle, just took it in, you know, like side sip, <laughs> side sip and back down. Um, so your ego is this defense mechanism that prevents you from getting to being the real authentic vulnerable version of you and mm. what it is now is the survival mechanism it's the mechanism now that the reason we have coping mechanisms is because we're hurting from something deep down inside no one in our life has given us the space or time to be able to discover that no one in our life probably even had the capability to help us understand what we're hurting so we just go along with this thing hurting us and we find different, different, different ways to be able to cope with life. And that's what your ego now uses as different strategies to um, pick on the things that it can use to, to survive. For some people, it's also sex addiction. For some people, it's alcoholism. For some people, it's just trying to seem like a really amazing human being. Topic of narcissism. Oh my God. Like this is another reason in my business is like, beep, 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 beep. I have to like be careful of like where I stand on this term, but I'm very open and brave to say that a narcissist people think is like this amazing person, with, this person with amazing capabilities to be like out there in public and stuff. It's actually someone hurting so deep down inside about who they truly are, that they've developed this massive persona of being able to manipulate everybody so that they seem lovable, amazing, you know, um, so they seem capable, powerful, because deep down inside, they are so afraid of who they are naturally. Truth is, I identified as a narcissist for very long as well. And that's why I have so much of real time info on to why I did what I did. People thought I was lovable. I was so popular amongst everyone. But I inside, deep down inside, didn't like who I was. And I just never knew that. So that's a coping mechanism. Narcissism is a coping mechanism to survive against a wound of like extremely low self-worth and validation. Eating a lot is a coping mechanism. So the ego is responsible for these coping mechanisms, but it hates to change. The ego, the number one thing it hates is change, which is why when you start to do inner work, the ego is like, whoa, 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 what you doing out here? You know, why are you, why are you trying to mess around with things? And so it'll try and get you to slip up. It'll try and get you to forget it. Because if you don't need a coping mechanism, then you also don't really need the ego. And that's the massive part. But when will you not need a coping mechanism? When you're finally in love with who you really are. When you yeah. accept yourself, when you value yourself, when your self-worth goes up. So that's really what the ego is and the part it has to play. I feel uh, so enlightened. 
Hey, and welcome to the Inner Yats YouTube page. If you like our content, make sure you click the like and the subscribe button so that you get more of these amazing videos that keep coming your way.